Despite the relative paucity of the curator's appearances in House of Ashes, he still finds the time necessary to engage in one of his favorite hobbies, using famous quotes and epigrams. If you're wondering what the difference between a quote and an epigram is, in this context, it's that a quote is a selection from a larger text, while an epigram is something written specifically to be read as a short, witty observation. Did I really need to explain that here? Probably not. But I wanted to give you time to like and subscribe, which I've been told I'm supposed to ask you to do at the start of the video instead of the end. So that's what just happened. Where was I? Right. The curator's quotes. Let's get into them. Long ago, I met a blind poet who impressed upon me these wise words. Long is the way and hard, and out of hell leads up to light. This is a quote from John Milton's Paradise Lost, an epic poem which covers the topic of Satan, here called the Angel Lucifer, being cast out of heaven and consigned to hell. These lines are from a speech that Satan gives laying out the situation in hell to the other angels who were banished there with him. So it's very much an appropriate quote for the situation the characters find themselves in, but not at all a useful hint, which is how it's presented. Oh, and Milton did go blind later in life, which is what the blind poet part of the line is a reference to. Poor Eric. Bad luck. But then again, Eric cheated death once before, back on that highway. Perhaps death finally caught up. While this isn't a literal quote, I suspect this may be a reference to the famous story Appointment in Samara, about a man who sees death in Baghdad, and death is just as surprised to see him. So the guy flees to Samara, but it turns out that the reason death was so shocked to see him in Baghdad was that he had an appointment to collect his soul that night in Samara. This whole idea of the inevitability of death is a popular theme, of course, so it may not point back to that story. But given that both of them take place in Iraq, I thought it was worth pointing out. Freely they stood who stood, and fell who fell. This is from Paradise Lost again. This time it's God speaking. Another clue for my curator's identity hunt, maybe? He's talking about how he created humans with all of the character necessary to reject Satan's lies, but he also gave them free will, meaning that if they sin against God, it's their fault, not his, because he doesn't control them. It's an especially apt quote to use in a game primarily about making vital decisions. As for Rachel, you kept her from falling into the darkness after all. She had to dig deeper than most to survive. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. Words to live by. This is a quote from Nietzsche, probably his most famous one, although I've always preferred the rope in the abyss. But that's a whole other thing. It needs very little explanation due to its fame. But it makes sense here, with the idea being that Rachel has been hardened by her experiences in the pit. This horror will grow mild. This darkness light. Milton again. This comes from Satan, explaining that although the place they've been sent to, hell, is awful and torturous, eventually he and the angels will grow accustomed to the climate and gradually turn it into their home. This isn't a particularly relevant quote to this part of the game, since it plays if there's a party wipe, but it certainly sounds good. The mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven. More Milton, unsurprisingly. This is Satan again. This time he's talking about how hell is only a prison if he believes it to be one. It could just as easily be his kingdom since he's finally away from the oppressive presence of God. This is from the beginning of the speech that leads to Paradise Lost's most famous quote, better to rule in hell than serve in heaven. Salim survived to fight another day. The father could not accept being separated from his son, so he fought his way back to the light. This comes from the classic rhyme, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day, which traces its origin back to the Roman era, somewhere between 400 BC and 100 AD, although it's not entirely clear who first coined it. It's a bit of a tragic thing to put at the end of Salim's story, since his entire motivation is to put combat behind him. Hopefully he'll never actually have to fight another day. Sergeant K managed to hold his nerve and focus on staying alive. 
He could easily have surrendered to the nightmare hunting him, but he proved he had the right stuff after all. The right stuff mentioned here is a term used by Tom Wolfe in his book of the same title. There it referred to the special quality it took to be a test pilot attempting to become one of the first astronauts, or in the case of Chuck Yeager, to be the first person to break the sound barrier. Definitely an appropriate description for the strength that Nick finds within himself when presented with the cosmic horrors beneath the temple. Rachel found her way back to the light, but the darkness reclaimed her. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. This line comes from the book of Job, one of the few places in the Bible that Satan actually appears. Specifically, 121. Here Job is explaining that he's still faithful to God, because all of the things that he had were given to him by God, so who is he to complain when they get taken back? In this context, it's used in the comfort the grieving way, reminding people that the big questions of life and death are out of their hands. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. First Lieutenant Kolchek was a revelation, was he not? This quote is so widely used as to be considered common knowledge, but its origins date back to the 4th century BCE in an Indian text on statecraft. This first use was in an explanation that any rival king whose territory borders on yours is necessarily your enemy. But a third king, whose territory borders your enemies but not yours, would be your friend. Never can true reconcilement grow where wounds of deadly hate have pierced so deep. And finally, we've got one more Milton quote. This is from the end of Paradise Lost Book 3, where Satan is explaining that he can't go back to being a servant of God, because anything he said while under duress wouldn't be true. It would just be an attempt to make the agony of being out of heaven stop. This is a great quote to use for Jason's sole survivor ending, where he doesn't become friends with Selim, as it reflects the idea that they could be allies while in combat, but in the end, his personal issues will still be there. Perfect quote for a truly depressing ending. As you can see, nearly all of the quotes this time came from one source, Paradise Lost, which I recommend you check out if you can put up with some fairly oblique text. It's a beautiful piece of writing and the origin of nearly all of Western fiction's ideas about Satan's character. The devil basically doesn't appear in the Bible. All of the ideas about a war in heaven and Lucifer being cast down come from Paradise Lost, which is essentially the world's most successful and influential work of fan fiction. So, we had Shakespeare as the main focus on Little Hope, and Milton in House of Ashes. I wonder who the curator will be reading in The Devil in May. I've been the Hidden Object Guru, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to see more from me, drop by the stream on YouTube and Twitch. Weekdays at 9pm Eastern, weekends, noon Eastern. Special thanks to my patrons Marissa, Desire, Eduardo, Brian, and Joanne. If there's any topics you want to see covered in future videos, please mention them in the comment section. I'll see you back here for more dark pictures, but until then, au revoir.